Hi there. Well, in the last uh, week or so, I've been talking about interest rates rising and stock markets falling. Well, now it seems to be official. It hasn't happened yet, but the papers are talking about it. And in fact, in the weekend's press, they've sort of said, who will take the hit when rates rise? Uh, they're actually saying it now, when rates rise, not if rates will rise. And they say, you know, who will take the, the hits? The economy, business woes, uh, Generation Z, millennials, uh, Generation X. I mean, everybody. <laughs> OK, boomers. Well, I, I think the, the elderly people, uh, not elderly, but people who are perhaps a little bit older, paid off their mortgage um, and have savings, they, they will be better off. And particularly if you're coming up to retirement, maybe annuity rates could improve. So people with, with money invested should be better off when interest rates rise, provided it's not all in the stock markets and stock markets then start falling because of interest rates rising. When interest rates rise, um, you expect the economy to slow down because the government wants to take the heat out of the economy with, with all the inflation that's around. So if that happens, if, if people's money is invested in, in the stock market, that could cause markets to fall. It could cause the property market to slow down. And, and who knows, it may even cause a, a property market slump. Um, you know, property in, in this country, anyways, is largely fueled by this availability of, of money, this endless supply of cheap money on mortgages. I mean, you can get mortgages uh, in, in the same paper over the weekend that they're, they're uh, advertising mortgages at less than 1% fixed. Uh, it's, it's just incredible. So it enables somebody to borrow so much more and still be affordable than it, than it was when I, I had a mortgage uh, which was was 15, 16 and a quarter percent, my first mortgage, which went up during the time I was waiting to, to go ahead and, and buy the property. Just from getting the offer to completion, it had gone up, you know, by a couple of percent. So uh, it, it made that mortgage very, very expensive. And now uh, I think, it, I mean, it was only a small amount of money, but for the same amount of money, I could probably borrow 10 times that now. Uh, so it, it's incredible, this, this endless supply of money. And if, if interest rates start going up, uh, and banks put the squeeze on a little bit, it could, things could get difficult. So what, what are you doing about it? How will it impact you? Uh, if you've got a mortgage and it's on a fixed rate, then you don't have to worry until that fixed rate comes to an end. And, and if interest rates are going up, they'll probably go up again because inflation is just going crazy throughout the world. You know, it's, it's, in most countries, it's a 10, 15 year high, uh, the inflation rate. So, you know, we know that interest rates may need to go up again to, to, to cut inflation. Otherwise, you know, the economy is just, just it's going to run away with everything. So if, interest, if you've got a mortgage on a fixed rate, eventually that, that rate will come to an end and then you're going to have to uh, then renew it. And, and that's when you could find things getting a bit more expensive. Now, if you've got a mortgage on a, a variable rate or a discount rate, then you will be affected by an interest rate rise because if your mortgage is a discount deal, then it's a discount pegged to their to their own variable rate, their own standard rate, if you like. Uh, it's not standard anymore. We, we, it used to be standard in the industry, but it's not now. They make up their own rates as they go along. So if you're if you're on a discount, say two percent less than the standard rate, then as the standard rate goes up, so your uh, payments will go up as well. But now might be the time to look at a fixed rate. There are some fantastic deals out there. So if you're on a rate that's not fixed, it's variable, it's stand, I mean, and it's a standard variable, it's a um, you know, discount rate, now might be the time to look at switching into a fixed rate to protect yourself from the inevitable rates rise. Because once the rates rise, then you know, those good deals will be pulled and they'll be, they'll be put out again at higher rates, and then you've, you've missed out. So perhaps have a look at that. Um, if you're all into the, uh, if you're, you're fully invested in the stock market and your, your, your savings may be at risk, Think about that. Now, you might say, I don't invest in the stock market. Well, perhaps your pension fund is invested in the stock market. You might be in a high risk fund strategy. This happened to people. People were put into high risk funds. They lost a lot of money. They took years then to sue the, the advisors uh, that, that gave them bad advice. So, you know, just just look at that. Talk to your advisors about where your pension funds are, are invested, where your money in the pension fund is actually invested. Because most of the money on the markets comes through pension funds, mutual funds, hedge funds, th these big, you know, th there are a lot of people who invest directly in stocks. And you can do that yourself. You can learn that, um, you know, from books, from courses. Uh, but most people invest through unit trusts, mutual funds uh, and, and pension funds. 
Now, if you're a if you're a pension fund with you know 100 billion under management, you can't sell those shares because the market would just collapse if if pension funds started selling like that. But if you're a private investor, you can you can pull out your small amounts of money. It's not going to affect the market. They're not going to say oh, it's not going to be on the news. You know, Charles Kelly pulled out 50,000 from the market. So no, they're not worried about a sale of a, a few hundred thousand even here or there. But, you know, if, if billions are start to be sold, then it triggers automatic sales as, as the market goes down. So I, I think and the Bank of England have warned about this, that stock markets could fall 10 uh, percent and, and could see a sharp turn downturn before the end of the year. That, that I, I told you that last week. Um, so just protect yourself there. Just watch out there for that. Uh, we know that in China that the, 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 the property market is there. There is in trouble. Uh, we've seen Evergrande. We've seen. Uh, Fantasia, appropriately named Fantasia, failing to meet its interest debt payment on bonds. And you know, I was talking to some Chinese investors the other day, and they said there are a lot more companies in trouble there, but the Chinese government are, are propping up the market. So they will probably buy the assets of those companies to avoid them uh, collapsing uh, and to avoid the whole property market collapsing there. But they have definitely built too many properties there. They can't sell them all. Uh, people on low incomes can't afford to buy them. So, so there's definitely a problem there. But whether it will cause, cause a worldwide collapse is probably unlikely if the, if the Chinese government insists on uh, keeping the market propped up artificially. In a way, the stock market should have fallen already. It should have peaked already. But the last couple of years, we've seen unprecedented uh, money printing, which has artificially fueled the market, artificially kept prices high and artificially pushed up the price of properties as well. Property prices in the UK are way above normal affordability rates. You know, I remember a few years ago when they were saying property is now four or five times the average income. People thought that was expensive. Now in a lot of cities, it's 15 times the average income for that area. How can people afford it? Well, they're affording it, I guess, by their parents maybe remortgaging their own properties to give them the cash to put down so they can buy these very expensive properties. And it's not unusual for a first time buyer to be buying a house for five or six hundred thousand pounds. I mean, it's just, you know, it, when I first bought a place, I t- bought a tiny little flat and then then bought a small house and then a bigger house. You know, now they're just going straight to that house and, and, and borrowing huge amounts of money. So, so just, uh, you know, be, be aware of that. Um, I, I personally think the market's overpriced, the property market's overpriced, and the stock market is definitely overpriced by, by any stretch, by any standard. The, property, the stock market is definitely overpriced. And we can see a lot of changes going on in the world. Um, you know, we, 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 we've got this so-called energy crisis. We've got fuel shortages, which didn't really exist. Um, now we've got problems in the meat industry. Uh, people are panicking, buying turkeys before Christmas. There's this thing about slaughterhouses. Where did this shortage in slaughterhouses suddenly come from? You know, but, you know, a, a lot of people are linking this to, to, to wider changes that are going on under what's commonly known as the Great Reset, where it just seems like there's changes going on around the world that are almost resetting our economy and resetting everything. Like the Great Reset, uh, the, the book The Great Reset talked about a cashless society. It talked about the society eating less meat. Now we know that you know, I read in the paper last week that the price of beef is, is set to soar. They don't want us eating beef. They don't want us eating pork. And, and in Japan, they're starting to uh, manufacture uh, synthetic food, synthetic food. I mean, what kind of food is that? You know, it's not even from a plant. It's synthetic. Uh, and, and we know that under the, the general term of the Great Reset, they're, they're, they're talking about digital currencies, central bank digital currencies. Uh, we've even got you know, world leaders talking about it, world leaders like, like Rishi Sunak, the Chancellor of the Exchequer here, talking about digital currencies. China's already got its own digital currency. Uh, other things that come under this this term of, of, of great reset. Yes, we talked about cashless uh, and we know that's happening. Um, we, we, we could see a whole change in the way things are done. Uh, you know, this general move towards the left in in countries and, and they're all doing the same thing. You know, the Anglo-Saxon countries of America, Australia, the UK, Canada, they're all simply moving in, in the same direction, whatever the, the, the color of the government, uh, that they seem to be moving in, in, in one kind of direction. Uh, the Great Reset also wants us flying less and that's already happened, hasn't it? You know, airlines have gone bust. Uh, it's become more, more of a hassle to fly. Uh, America now won't let you in unless you've been fully vaccinated and you've had this and you've had that. You know, so, so 
travel has become restricted. Everything's become more difficult and we, we seem to be in, uh, pushed into boxes and, and controlled more. That, that's what seems to be happening. Uh, you know, I'm not talking about conspiracy theories here. I'm just talking about what, what we can see is happening around the world. We've also seen a lot more censorship in the media and, and certainly the mainstream media singing almost from the same song sheet as if they were sent round uh, what to print the next day and they were all printing the same thing. Um, you know, we know that, I mean, for instance, in, in Italy, there, there, are, there are massive uh, demonstrations all over Italy, but it's not, it's not and this is against um, uh, COVID passports, and, and yet it's not even mentioned in the mainstream media. It's not mentioned on, on, uh, on, on even uh, social media because that, that has also been censored by uh, Silicon Valley. So it's interesting to see what's happening in the world. Keep your eyes open. Uh, don't just rely on what you see. On, on one channel, BBC, look at the other channels, look at what's going on. I mean, the BBC hardly report anything that's going on in the world now, and unless it's some bombing or something, but they're just concentrated on here and, and their, their woke agenda. It, it doesn't seem like there's, there's another world out there. I, I have to watch Al Jazeera to know what's going on in Asia or, or the Middle East. Uh, and I have to watch RT News to see, to t see things from a different point of view. Okay, it might be slightly biased towards Russia, but at least you can get a different point of view by watching different, different channels, RT, J Al Jazeera, uh, GB News, uh, because what I see pumped out by the BBC and Sky is, it seems to be the, just one thing. So just, just watch out there, uh, look after your money, become financially educated, make sure that you, you know what you're doing so that you don't have to rely on financial advisors and fund managers. You know yourself what to do with your money because you, you've become educated. I put a lot of free stuff out here. Support my channels, YouTube, Facebook, support and like them, subscribe, share the, share the news. And also look at my, my free training videos that I, I put links to all the time. So thanks for listening. Uh, have a great evening. Tomorrow I'll be talking about some uh, ways you can save money, money saving tips tomorrow. So thanks for listening and have a good evening. Bye for now. Hi there to everyone tuned in on, on Facebook. Shirley, Cecile, great to see you. Thanks for your support. Please like and share and subscribe. Great to see you. Thanks a lot. Bye.